So patients who are in uh, recovery from alcohol use disorder, they often suffer from uh, sleep disturbances. They tend to sleep more lightly. And by that, I mean they spend more time in their sort of light stages of sleep, not the deep sleep. They wake up more often. And then when they do wake up, they wake up for longer. Um, the, the scientific literature has shown that there's an association between poor sleep and drinking outcomes. So uh, those that are in recovery but still drinking tend to drink more um, and are less successful at, uh, at becoming abstinent. And those that are abstinent may end up returning to drinking if, uh, if they have bad insomnia. So importantly, there's no approved treatment for managing this condition, no FDA approved treatment. And the results from the study uh, of a drug not, that, that, that is called Sonobinop, and it is a NOP receptor agonist, the first NOP receptor agonist to be studied in this indication. This is the uh, potential first step towards examining the safety and efficacy of the treatment that of, of any treatment that's under development for this specific indication. So what's, what's kind of cool is that we think this is the first step towards coming up with a treatment for these uh, patients. Um, in addition to the sleep effects and the association between sleep disruption and alcohol, there's also a body of literature with a strong link between this receptor and the reinforcing effects of alcohol. So that means that if we can um, activate this receptor, it may reduce the reinforcing effects of alcohol. So it may have an effect beyond sleep and have an effect on the actual drinking outcomes. Uh, in terms of the major highlights from the study, uh, if I can keep going, so the fir first of all, we always consider safety. And um, importantly, there were no serious adverse events reported in this study. Somnolence or sleepiness was the main adverse event. It's also what the drug is designed to do, of course. Um, and that occurred in 26% of patients at the higher dose of two milligrams mm. and in 5% of patients at the dose of one milligram. Um, the, the primary endpoint of the study was the time after wake onset. So how much time that the patients are awake after they fall asleep. Uh, that was the primary outcome. And we're very happy that both doses caused a st statistically significant effect at that, at that end point. So we're, we're, that was a great outcome. Um, that was measured using polysomnography or looking at the actual brain waves, which is an objective measure. Uh, we also have effects at both doses on multiple other measures that were also gained by polysomnography analysis of the subjects. And those include sleep efficiency, the number of uh, awakenings that happened overnight. And uh, when, when they did wake up, they were awake for a shorter period of time. So we had pretty good efficacy at both the doses on our uh, polysomnography readings. We also paid a close attention to craving so how these subjects were craving alcohol. And um, as expected in this population, the craving was quite low. We didn't precipitate craving and they weren't actively drinking. Um, but very importantly for the drug, we didn't see any increase in craving scores. So the drug um, didn't cause any craving and didn't, didn't make them uh, seek the alcohol. And that's very important because if the drug was interacting with the same systems, it may have increased craving. Um, we know that the drug is acting through a very different mechanism to the mechanism in which alcohol affects the individual, so that we're very happy to see that there was no increase in craving. 